What is your never again brand, store, restaurant, or company? I run the front desk at a hotel and they are an absolute nightmare. They also straight up lie to the guests and to the hotels constantly. Truly one of the most shady companies I've ever dealt with. They purposely try and deceive people who don't know any better into thinking that they are dealing with the hotel directly. They create ads in such a way that when people google the hotel's phone number, a number to Expedia comes up. And if the customer asks if they are speaking directly with the hotel front desk they will say yes. There have been countless times where guests have called to cancel their reservation that was booked through Expedia. I inform them that they will have to contact Expedia directly, since they prepaid through them, but that it will be no issue because the hotel does not charge a penalty fee for cancellation. An Expedia representative will call the hotel with the guest on hold and ask about getting it cancelled. I tell them it's no problem. They ask if we will be charging a penalty fee, and I tell them no. All is right and good, right? Nope. I then get a call back from the guest who is upset, saying that the Expedia representative told them they could not be refunded because of the fee charged by the hotel's cancellation policy, taking the guest's money and blaming it on the hotel, and keeping all of the profit. This has happened countless times. I once had a guest while at the front desk call about cancelling 3 days out of a multiple day reservation, as she had to leave earlier than expected. They pulled the same balls with her, not knowing that she was at the front desk. After me telling the representative that the cancellation is fine and we will not be charging any penalties, they get back on the phone with her and blatantly lie. I asked her to hand her phone to me and that was quite a surprise for the representative, who said that there must have been a misunderstanding. Used to be a health inspector. In my first year a lot of my old favorite restaurants were ruined for me. But none so bad as the discount sushi place my college bestie and I used to frequent. They had roaches bad. In my time at the health department I never saw them worse than in that kitchen. We got calls about the roaches at least twice a month. And every time we went they were back with a vengeance. They were closed for them multiple times, but just never kept up with the pest control and cleaning necessary to get rid of them. They were also dying tilapia red and selling it as red snapper on their menu. This is pretty common around here, but it's super illegal because it's little false advertising. Fun fact, some people are allergic to tilapia. Not sure I want to be around when that restaurant owner finds that out. They had hundreds of cardboard boxes stacked outside their back door plus a bunch of old equipment they weren't using. This added to the roach problem and any day it could turn into a rodent problem. One time I drive by and they had animal cages back there. Two, I don't wanna know that story. Add to that, I'm pretty sure the employees are all indentured servants or victims of human trafficking. They all show up in the same beat up white van every day and work a 12 plus hour shift. The owner is unkind to them and they don't respect him. He says he can trust them to do their jobs but was sketchy when we said to fire them and hire employees who will. We never had proof, but it was always upsetting and struck me as off. He tried to bribe me and my co-workers multiple times, too. I'm not a health inspector anymore but he still tries to give me free food or money when he sees me. He opened a new restaurant and I didn't know it was his, so a friend and I went to go check it out. I was told that appetizers were free for me only. Then I saw him in the back. We had to leave. Never again. It's too sketchy and too likely to get me sick. We bought a flea medicine from Hearts to use on our cat and she became lethargic and didn't eat anything. We took her to the vet and they told us that they have been trying to get that medicine off the shelves because of how it affects animals. I was in a theater watching Despicable Me when my cat finally passed away. It sucked knowing that my cat is dead because of some money hungry brand who doesn't care about the safety of the animals it gives its products to. Pyrethrins are toxic to cats. I nearly killed my cat with hard mite solution 15 years ago, and it's still on the market. Why Hearts hasn't been sued out of existence I will never understand. Comcast. A door-to-door -door salesman straight up lied to my dad, saying they had a 4 DVR setup that would cost less than what we were paying AT&T. When the installation guy got there, he said that no, they didn't have a 4 DVR setup. He was told to give us the standard 2 DVR setup. Which was absolutely not something that would work in a house with 6 people with wildly different tastes and TV shows. So my dad tells him never mind, we're sticking with AT&T then. But because the Comcast guy had already installed our new cable box, 
he couldn't take it back with him, so we had to mail it back to Comcast ourselves. The kicker is, 5 years later Comcast tried to bill my parents for the cable box, saying we never sent it back. My parents insisted they did, and Comcast wanted the UPS receipt, which obviously we no longer had because it was 5 years ago and we hadn't heard anything from them before this. So my parents refused to pay, Comcast sent a collections company after us, and when my parents explained the situation to the collection company, they were like those suckers, we'll take care of this, that was, thankfully, the end of it. I've heard Comcast pulls that crap with the UPS receipt quite a bit so the last time I returned a box I made dang sure I kept it took a picture of it just in case. Glad the collections agency understood. If I see something is being shipped by on track, I'll cancel. The three times they were the delivery company from Amazon. They lost one package completely and tried to say it wasn't their fault. The second package was also deemed lost but then showed up on my doorstep something like 6 weeks later. The third time it sat on shipping label created for a week and I just contacted Amazon and cancelled the package. You don't find a lot of positive reviews out there and any positive ones you do find seem like they were written by the company via a fake account. Every package I've ever had stolen was shipped via one track. They claimed it was delivered and I never find it. One time I looked with minutes of its supposed delivery. Yeah, sure maybe the residents of my apartment complex are shady but UPS, FedEx, and USPS never seem to have this issue. Lift. They recently charged me a damage fee for damages I could not have plausibly caused. I sent statements explaining how it couldn't have been me. They sent back a standardized statement and didn't give me any additional information. There is no phone line to talk to a representative. I sent them multiple follow up emails, which they never responded to. Now I have to write a statement for my credit card company to dispute the charge. The driver tried handing me free water, the bottle fell out and of his hand and some water spilled on me and the seat. Two weeks later I get a charge of $129 for a damage. Let me tell you I went absolutely crazy. Told them I will see them in court and they changed their tune. Never had to pay. I hate them. Warning. Disgusting story ahead. I went to Dickie's barbecue pit. Their food isn't amazing but I was craving southern food and my suburban town in California doesn't have many options. So me and my girlfriend buy some sandwiches and have them for dinner. They are cold and taste like salty sweat. The next day I have uncontrollably crapping liquid crap and vomiting multiple times an hour. If I was alone I would have gone to the emergency room but my dad's a nurse and was there. I vomited something like 20 times in the whole day and kept dry heaving afterwards. The diarrhea came so fast and uncontrolled that it ruined multiple pairs of underwear and a rug that was by the toilet. Why my dad has rugs in the bathroom I don't know but I crap on it when bent over the toilet. It took only a day for me to feel better and I was already eating heavy foods again. But lo and behold guess who comes over to see me well again and shoots herself in my bathroom? My girlfriend. The only other person who ate at Dickies. So I spent the rest of the day, after having just crap and vomited myself to death, helping my girlfriend when she was crapping and vomiting. I think we're closer to each other after that experience. TL. DR. Ate at Dickie's barbecue pit. Shitted and vomited ruining clothes and a rug. GF came over and crap and vomited too. Food poisoning is intense suffering but fortunately short lived. Still, I put it up there with tooth pain and back pain. Ate a Mariano's rotisserie chicken and died that day. I will never eat rotisserie chicken again. I thought I had food poisoning before by feeling sick after a meal. But you know it's actual food poisoning when you're crapping out both ends. Wafer. Purchased a $1000 sectional couch that was delivered with damaged upholstery. They refused to let me return it and instead offered me 10% off my next purchase. Yeah, never using that discount code. 1800 flowers. Frick them. They waited several days after I placed an order for Mother's Day to tell me that they wouldn't be able to fulfill the order. They waited until the day before, putting me in a bad position. Now I google my mom zip, add flowers and have a few choices. I call the local shops directly and Quan 1800 flowers is cut out of the process. Same. Local florists are the only way to go. Also 1800 flowers never unsubscribes you from their cavalcade of marketing crap. Frontier Internet. 
They're one of the shittiest ISPs I've ever had. I will never go back, no matter how cheap it is. I have Frontier. I stopped paying them like 3 years ago, and they continue to give me service. They are so disorganized that they have no idea. Macy's. Got a credit card through them to buy a suit. My parents offered to pay the card off as a birthday present. Q months of them calling me 5 plus times a day, asking where the payment that had already been made was, harassing me to make more and larger payments. When it was finally paid off, they then tacked on a completed payment fee and never sent a bill, so the whole dang thing started all over. I was genuinely about to file a lawsuit over harassment or something. It was unbelievable, because I would tell one person the payment was made, and then get 4 more calls the same day asking the same thing. Then rinse and repeat tomorrow. Spirit Airlines. Never again. Frick them. Flight from Vegas got cancelled. They don't even bother trying to put you on another flight. Not only that you have to pay extra for the next flight available. I told them they can go frick themselves and I want a refund. The customer service person told me he can refund me spirit credit. That's when I lost it. After enough bitching, he gave me my money back to my credit card and I bought a flight on Delta. I said this about another spirit complaint in this thread. All spirit airlines flight should be non-stop and one way. Lularo. I only bought stuff to help out a friend that was trying to make ends meet. Luckily she quit after about a year. Bought 3 pairs of leggings over the course of the year and none of them made it the year without holes. $25 each. Never again. Also, I felt gross buying from an MLM. Bit like I said, just supporting a friend. My friend spent almost $20,000 to start up for Lularo. She ended up not selling very much, and they don't let you return the unused product for full price only half price. I'm glad she's not selling it anymore because I have the same complaint about the quality of the clothes. Absolute garbage pyramid scheme. AT&T. I was told that cancelling my cable and internet services with them would cost me $50 to not return the modem and cable boxes. I didn't care as I would have had to mail them in and didn't want to mess with the hassle, so I didn't. Six months later I find a $487 charge on my MasterCard and it was from AT&T. It was $150 per piece of equipment, and a $37 service charge. You know, charging me money for their hassle of having to charge me money. I asked if I returned the equipment would they rescind the charges. They said yes. I returned the equipment and they refused to take off the charge. I confirmed with them that they received the equipment and they said yes they did, but wouldn't rescind the charges after all. I fought it up their chain of command as much as possible and even tried to fight it through Mastercard but they couldn't do anything about it either. TL. DR. AT&T screwed me out of $487, and lied to me, so frick them. Freaking AT&T it's one thing after another with these buttholes. They've been taking $60 a month from my checking account for the last 7 months for a prepaid phone that I don't have they can't tell me why or take me off auto draft because I don't have a phone number to look up the phone that I don't own. I just spent almost an hour at the bank trying to dispute this crap. It's just the most recent in a long list of fuckery caused by AT&T. Those two arts. Neiman Marcus. I went there to buy a Prada bag for my mother. She had a knockoff she loved. So I figured she'd appreciate the real thing. I wear t-shirts to work. But this day it was at least a fancy one. It didn't matter. The sales lady told me it's very expensive. Rolled her eyes and walked away. So. I went next door to the actual Prada store and bought one. I don't need to be judged by an angry middle aged woman working retail. Thank you very much. I worked at Neiman's for a little bit during my college years and how quickly I discovered that usually it's the people who are not dressed up, or decked out in all designer gear, are the ones who actually spend the most money. That sales lady was a bee. My petty butt would have made it a point to purposely walk back by her with my beautiful new Prada shopping bag. Comcast. Frick Comcast. They failed to turn off my service when I changed addresses, billed me for 2 more months, sent me to collections, and harassed me for 3 years. I could sue but it's not worth the stress. I am currently stuck with Comcast. I pay for their 60 Mbps internet package to get 1-5 Mbps downloads along with only being able to have one device connected at a time. Wafer. 
delivered a wooden table that had a huge split on the side and was broken where you put the leaf to extend the table. Got four deliveries and every single time it was the exact same table with the same damage. Eventually got a full refund but did they seriously think that would work? Makes zero sense to me. Bonus. Ordered a bedroom set around the same time and paid for delivery and assembly. The assemblers were two stroke three through the assembly and told me they couldn't finish because they couldn't understand the instructions. Had them take all the stuff back and also got a refund. Turbo tax. Did my return. Got a notice that my e-file needed to be corrected. Logged back in to fix it and my return wasn't there anymore. Six hours on the phone with three tiers of tech support. Each one trying exactly the same thing. Finally they were just trying random crap. So I tried random crap in parallel. Managed to get to my return with the invoice number from paying for the service without logging in. Tried to get them to understand that this was a very bad thing that they should report to someone. And they told me they had no access to anyone technical and no way to submit bugs. This from the company that lobbied to make it illegal for the government to offer tax filing service. There is a burger joint here. Relatively new. Less than 5 years that some people swear by. It's a weird kind of burger though. A kind of spicy gravy style burger. But not like your grand's gravy. It's rather tangy, vingary, whatever. It was odd. So I tried it on my lunch break, recommended by a co-worker, and thought, meh, I don't get the hype, but it's not terrible. Then I went back to work, and shortly thereafter all heck broke loose. I had the most volatile, violent, unsolicited and certainly non-consensual colon cleanse of my life. I was so obviously tore up that not even my manager made a stink about me essentially doing zero work for the next 4 hours of the work day. To this day when I pass by that place I say never again my wife thinks I'm making a stupid dad joke I won't give up on. She's aware of what it did to me, but for me it's more of a solemn prayer. I had the most volatile, violent, unsolicited and certainly non-consensual colon cleanse of my life. I was so obviously tore up that not even my manager made a stink about me essentially doing zero work for the next 4 hours of the work day. Perhaps that's why your co-worker recommended it. A hospital in my area. My brother and his wife just recently had a baby there. My first nephew and their first child. He was born 2 weeks premature by scheduled c-section. But you couldn't tell since he was more than 9 pounds when he came out. If he went full term he could have been more than 11 pounds. Anyways, he arrives and everything is going well. His blood sugar was a little low, but the doctors claimed it got better. A day later and he begins twitching every once in a while. My sister-in-law asks the pediatrician and the nurse why and they said that it was fine. The day after that and the twitching increased and he began doing it every other minute. My brother and his wife panic and ask the doctor but the doctor checks his blood quickly and says nothing is wrong but if they're still worried about it they should wait to go to the pediatrician on Monday. Three days later, as soon as they leave the hospital despite the baby still twitching they turn around and ask for the doctor to please look one more time. He refuses and tells them that they can't look anymore because they are discharged from the hospital. Refusing to believe that their baby was okay, my brother and his wife took him to a different hospital's emergency room. The doctor there took one look at the baby's blood and immediately prepared a bottle of formula for him. His blood sugar was 36. If you aren't familiar with blood sugar then just know that sugar that low can be deadly. My sister-in-law's milk hasn't come in yet. She didn't know that. And the pediatrician at the first hospital only gave the baby 2 ounces of formula in 2 days. He baby was very close to going into shock. If they took the doctor's advice and waited until Monday that baby would have been dead before reaching home. You might want to look into medical malpractice. Golden Corral. That place is a festering pile of crap. When I took my serve safe class for work, the instructor was a former health inspector. Literally all of his examples of what not to do were from Golden Corral. Applebee's. First time I ever got food poisoning from a restaurant. You're not missing much. Chilies. I don't know how this even happens, but I was served fried chicken that was cold and literally had ice on it. Well it's not called warmies dude. Cox Cable Internet. Called to cancel my account after I got legally separated from my ex-wife. She was able to cancel the cancellation. Her name was on the account as well. Edit. I was the primary account holder. 
she was added for billing only when I was on deployments, and used that account for like 8 years. I moved to England for a while, then to New Mexico, and eventually back to Oklahoma, where she still lived. When I tried to activate new service, they told me I had a previous account with an unpaid balance of like $700. Granted, it was the ex-wife that really freaked me over on that one, but the fact that they allowed her to uncancel a service I asked to have cancelled blew my mind. This is the money cat like this and in the next 24 horas you will receive money or maybe not but try it anyways. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video, or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.